Welcome to episode number two from chapter six. And in this episode, we're going to talk about how can we manage land resources and how can we manage forest resources. This is all part of our umbrella of sustainable development. Now remember, sustainable development must be equitable, socially and economically, and it also needs to be good for the environment. So we can get all three of those little things to match, uh, then you're in sustainable development. All right, so how do we manage our, our land resources? Well, misuse of land will lead to soil erosion and desertification. Now, soil erosion is when wind and water will push away the topsoil. Remember, topsoil is the part of the soil where all the nutrients are available for the plants. And desertification is basically what it means uh, when you turn basically what was good land into a desert. Uh, very hard to get crops and stuff to grow in a desert. Now, one of the best ways to get rid of soil erosion is to do contour plowing. Now, you'll notice here that the farmer has taken his tractor and plowed and seeded and he's following the contours of the land. Now you'll notice this little dip right here. If he had plowed his rows in this direction, then every time it rained, there would be a soil washed down this way. But because his rows are going this way, these are gonna act like a dam when the water is flowing. So the water is gonna to wanna to flow this way, so it's gonna be stopped, it can't run down the hill. And you'll notice probably this area right in here, that would be a ditch or a river where the water would be flowing into, okay? So contour plowing can greatly help with soil erosion. Now this is one of the area, things that you're gonna find in our area in the Midwest, and this has become real common, uh, really starting around the early 1990s, maybe late 1980s, was no-till farming. In no-till farming, you're not gonna plow under the crops from last year. So if you look down here in this picture, the previous growing season, the farmer planted some corn. Now, when the corn is harvested in the fall, the old practice would be to plow all this litter underneath. Well, instead of doing that, uh, he's just going to replant on top of this. And all this litter right here, this leaf litter, this organic matter, uh, this is going to act as a blanket to hold down the soil so when there is heavy rains and when there is uh, heavy winds during the wintertime, the soil is not going to be blown away. It's going to be held down by this, what we would call plant litter. All right, so no-till farming, very common practice and really, really effective when it comes to stopping uh, soil erosion. All right, managing forest resources. Now, remember, forests are your lungs of the earth. They have a really important job when it comes to the greenhouse effect. And really, uh, if we would manage our forests a lot better, we could greatly help uh, with global warming. Because what plants do is they're going to take uh, CO2 out of the air and use it for photosynthesis. Well, humans with their burning of fossil fuels have been adding to the CO2 in the atmosphere. And that's been basically like throwing more blankets on the greenhouse effect, and that's keeping our global temperatures on the rise. And so if we could find a way to take this carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, uh, we could lessen the effect of global warming. And trees are a great resource for doing that. So we call them the lungs of the earth. They make oxygen, they're pulling carbon dioxide out. Well, forests come in two flavors. Number one is new growth. New growth, uh, this is actually a forest that has been logged at least once, and it was allowed to grow back naturally. Um, these are renewable. In other words, cut down the tree, maybe plant some new ones, or let the trees come back naturally, and you know, 20, 30, 40 years later, you can cut them down again. It's a renewable resource. It's very sustainable. Okay, Old growth uh, forest, these have never, ever been logged. All right, so when we cut those down, it's no longer old growth. It'll now have to become renewable. Now, here's the problem with old growth forests. If you cut them down, that may lead to the extinction of some species because when it grows back as a new growth forest, the species compo uh, composition could be different than the original. So remember that primary and secondary succession that we had about in the previous chapter? that comes into play. Even though you let it come back, you may not have the old species that come back completely because you could have caused the extinction of some others. 
<clears throat> All right, what are the effects of deforestation? Well, number one can be severe erosion, especially if your forest was on a mountainside. I want you to pay attention over here to this picture. All right, this is done probably in a tropical rainforest, and you'll notice here that they've pretty much clear cut the side of this hill. All right, so when a tropical depression comes through here or a tropical storm, the rain's going to hit this, and these roots are not going to be as, as, uh, uh, effective as they were before and they were alive. So a lot of this topsoil is going to run off. And when the topsoil runs off, it's going to be very difficult for new plants to grow back. All right? If we would cut down a forest so that we can use it for grazing of livestock or we're going to turn it into farmland, when we graze it and when we plow it, that can actually prevent trees from coming back. So, I mean, obviously, if we were to clear a forest and plant down corn, we're not going to let trees grow in our cornfield. That's going to defeat the whole purpose of it, right? Uh, also, if we cut down the trees so we get to the under part of the, of the forest and we let livestock come in there and graze, they may just destroy all the plants. So if you look here, this at one time used to be a forest. And this always reminds me of the Lorax, right? You, I would expect to see that little orange booger stick out behind this forest because he cut down all the truffle trees. And as you can see here, they've cut down this forest and they've severely changed the ecosystem to the point that it's now a desert. I mean, this is bone dry. There's no plants growing whatsoever. That is straight up desertification. All right, so how can we keep this from happening? Well, here's a list of four things that we can do to protect forests. Number one is selective logging. In other words, don't cut down all the trees like you saw in the previous picture with desertification. Leave some of the younger ones there. They're going to be able to grow up, um, they're going to flower, they're going to produce seeds, the seeds will fall and be carried away, and new trees will come up. So if you look over here in this picture, you can tell that they've logged it, because if you look back here behind, there's the rest of the forest. This area has been logged, but they didn't cut down all the trees. These conifers here are going to produce uh, pine cones, and those pine cones will be seeds, and we'll start to see over time new trees come back. You could do what I think is really obvious. Whenever you log a forest, you should maybe replant the trees you cut down so that you can come back later and cut them down again. And that may lead us to what's called tree farms. You see over here in this picture, this is a tree farm. Notice the trees are all in nice orderly rows. Uh, that's, that way they're getting the most efficient amount of trees per acre. And they're eventually going to come back when they get a certain size, cut them down, use the lumber for paper or for building homes or whatever, and then they're going to replant the trees. It's just no different than a farmer who plants corn, harvests it, plants corn, harvests it, etc. And we could also develop new tree varieties that grow really fast, all right? problem with trees is they take decades to get to their right height. What if we could, through artificial selection or genetic alteration, create trees that grow much faster than normal. So instead of it taking 20 years to grow to a height that is harvestable, maybe it only takes 10 years. And that would do, be a, a great impact when it comes to tree farming. And that would keep us from impacting the, the forests that are around us. All right, we're going to stop right here on this episode. So until the next one, we're going to catch you on the flip side.